Okay, welcome back. It's now been nine days uh, since I started this this brew. Uh, this was a, a triple brew, so it held uh, six litres of uh, water. Uh, the four, maybe five day period, uh, this was still far too um, alkaline, if you like. Uh, we're looking for a pH of around about three, and uh, it still tasted very, very sweet. So um, this is now day nine. I've given it a try, and it is getting on the dry side. Um, slightly effervescent uh, on the on the tongue. So uh, I think I'm going to bottle it. Um, I took a pH strip, and it's just down here. Let's see if I can get this into focus for you. These are the pH strips, and uh, this goes from 4.6 down to 2.8. And as you can see. Um, it's gone quite yellow. Uh, beforehand I was up in the, the purple zone. But um, yeah, we're looking uh, well and truly beyond uh, maybe, yeah, possibly could, could be about three, which is what we're looking for. Uh, that gives me a good indication that uh, the, the culture has converted all those, those sugars and uh, the process is pretty much done. So um, we're going to go through the bottling phase. Um, I don't know if you can see in there, but... Uh, Let's see how close we can get. Now, there's a little bit of a yeast strand in there, but uh, that isn't going to do you any harm whatsoever. Okay, here's my kombucha after the nine days. If you look down the side there, it was at six litres, and it's down to, I would say that's just under five. Okay, so it's um, it's absorbed quite a bit of, of uh, water, and uh, I'm sure some of that's evaporated with the warmth as well. Okay, so if we uh, have a look inside, better see how this kombucha is fed. Now, if you remember, I said that the new scoby will cover the whole top. And if you look in there, you can see how there's a, a new, it's almost like a membrane. Very thin layer there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that in there. And uh, what I'll do is I'll draw off uh, with the tap on my container and I've got um, about 10 bottles waiting to top up and I'll uh, get that sorted now and then we'll come back to this and I'll go on to starting another brew using this new SCOBY but uh, before I do that I will take it out eventually so you can have a good look at it and uh, see how it fares. I see in front of you is a 500 milliliter brewer's bottle and uh, got the rubber cap there, ceramic lid and they just close like that. Now what I've done to prepare my bottles is I've given them a good wash out and uh, a rinse through and I've also rinsed with uh, filtered water to get rid of any of the chlorine that might be in there and I've whacked them in the oven and dried them out at about 80 degrees, it doesn't need to be any hotter than that 80 degrees is hot enough to kill off any bacteria that might be inside. Okay, so um, these are the bottles I'm using, 500 milliliter bottles. Look closely, you can see the, the new SCOBY here. That was what was left on the top. It's almost translucent. It's probably about an eighth of an inch thick. And the original mother, this is this large one I put in first time round, that's quite apparent there. I'll put both of those in in the next brew, there's no harm in doing that. But if you look inside, you can see this layer here, this is all the yeasty products that were generated. Almost like a, a jelly. Let me put my fingers in there. Stringy jelly. So what I'll do is I'm going to try and uh, distill a little bit more off this and then uh, that'll be it. And I'll use about 100 mils of this for my next starter brew. Okay, I've now made my new batch. And uh, that's the tea mixture in there. Nice and warm. And uh, I've got the scoby here, the mother, and the, the baby. And uh, about to stick, I'll stick both those in there. And uh, hopefully we'll get another baby from the slot 
So let's just pull up. Right, don't worry if it sinks, because uh, as you saw there when I took the lid off before, a new scoby had formed and it was set on the top there. And there she is. That one's a bit lighter than the previous one. Okay, so uh, back with the muslin cloth and elastic and then back to the hot plate. And that'll be my next large batch ready.